Hi, everybody. My name is Patricia Chapatier, and welcome to episode nine of the Life Writers Blog, where you can find inspiration and useful tips to help you write your life story. Recently, my husband and I celebrated our anniversary with a trip to the beach. Living in Orlando, it's very convenient because we can drive one hour to the east and get to the Atlantic coast or two hours to the west and be on the Gulf of Mexico. This time we decided to go to Madeira Beach on the Gulf. Now, our idea of going to the beach is kind of different from most people's plans. We don't like to lather up with suntan lotion and bake in the hot Florida sun. We also don't fish, swim, surf, jet ski, kayak, throw a football or a frisbee or build sandcastles. Yeah, I know, we're really strange Floridians. Our idea of going to the beach is a balcony and a book. We just need to be near the beach, not necessarily on it. My husband was reading Jonathan Kellerman. He loves mysteries where there's a dead body on every other page. <laughs> In our Life Writers membership, we're studying Richard Grant's Dispatches from Pluto. So I was reading through it again. Plus I had a number of sample downloads of books to see if they were something I want to read. Now, a great read, whether you are at the beach or anywhere else, is any book by Rick Bragg. Rick Bragg. He's got quite a few of them, too. I love Rick Bragg. I have a shelf in my bookcase that is taken up just by Rick Bragg. He grew up dirt poor in a little town called Possum Trot in northeastern Alabama. He's funny and entertaining, just a down-home kind of writer. But he's also a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter from the New York Times. He wrote the back page for Southern Living Magazine for quite a while, and he's currently a writing instructor at the University of Alabama. I would absolutely love to be in one of his classes. I can't imagine what a hoot that would be. Bragg's books are classified as memoir, and there's some of him in each one, but he's not the main focus in most of the books he writes. He wrote his first book about his mother called All Over But the Shouting. Then he wrote about his grandfather, one called Ava's Man in 2001. He wrote about his father in The Prince of Frogtown. And a lot of that book is about him becoming a father to his stepson. He even wrote a book about his dog <laughs> called The Speckled Beauty, a dog he calls the ugliest dog in the world. But today what we're gonna talk about is Ava's Man. Ava's Man is about Bragg's grandfather, Charlie Bundrum, his maternal grandfather, and he died a year before Bragg was even born. Now, the Ava in Ava's Man is Bragg's grandmother, who he did know well because he lived with her for a while, if I remember correctly. Bragg's mother, grandmother, aunts, uncles talked about Charlie all the time. He was a larger than life character and the family had so many stories. He wrote the book based on their stories. It's set during prohibition in the deep south, mostly Alabama, and Charlie was a longtime maker of moonshine. Throughout the book, the police were trying to catch him and did so for 30 years and never ever caught him making moonshine. Bragg does so many things well in his writing that it's really hard to isolate just one or two or 10 even to talk about. But one thing he does amazingly well is writing fresh similes. Simile is a tool that's used to compare two dissimilar objects. And it's a way to help readers understand something they may not be familiar with by comparing it to something that is more familiar. It always uses the words either like or as, 
and it's a key tool in figurative writing. What the fresh simile does is create images in the reader's mind. It's difficult to write similes that aren't cliches because we've heard cliches a million times and they just come right to our mind immediately. But Bragg is masterful at writing similes that are not cliches. I'm gonna read a couple of my favorites that came out of Ava's Man. Talking about somebody went out soft and quiet like a cat leaving a room. Another one is like putting boot heels to a man already down. Another one, face like a pickaxe. Another one, her eyes were like two drill bits. Another is standing over his shoulder, looking down on him like a conscience. <laughs> and uh, another one, Fred, built like a refrigerator with a hat, could boom from the pulpit and send sin scrambling like a spider for a dark hole. I love a great simile and Bragg has got them like everywhere. I've heard a good simile is one that compares two items that would never be put together otherwise, but when read, you know exactly what the author meant. Similes seem to roll right out of Bragg's pen because he's got a ton of them in his book, but I believe strongly that they don't just roll right out of his pen. He really works hard to get them. This book, really all of his books are great for creating characters. His dialogue is wonderful. He includes the right amount of dialect. He creates vivid settings and it's such an enjoyable read. In places, it is laugh out loud funny. There's no one right way to create good similes that aren't cliches. You usually have to reject the first three or more that come to your mind. They come to your mind quickly because you've heard them so often. They're cliches. There isn't a magic formula. It takes a lot of practice. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity to practice. Pick one or more of Bragg's similes listed in the description and change the ending to make it a different simile. Change what comes after the like or the as and just see what you can do with it. Then share them with us down in the comments section below because we'd love to read your version of Bragg similes as well. Thanks so much for listening and happy writing until we cross paths again. If you enjoyed this week's episode, you will love our Life Writers membership. Whether you don't know where to start writing your life stories, have started and stopped many times, or have been writing but want to receive feedback to make your stories better, the Life Writers membership is where you need to be. We have a get started roadmap, an extensive library of instructional videos, live events via Zoom, and a supportive and active community. If you want to take the stories that live in your heart and mind and put them onto the page, check out Life Writers at lifewriters.us.